Hey, everybody. We're here with Ian from All Star Charts. Um, Ian is a analyst and does a lot in the commodities markets. He's also has shows uh, called What the Fick. And he's doing a lot of great stuff all the time. I'm always impressed with his analysis. It's very price-based, very objective. Um, and that's really what, what we want to see, you know, because really as traders, like we're not really caring about our opinions as much as our ability to look at the charts, read the charts, and let it speak to us. So how are you doing today, Ian? Excellent. Thank you for the intro. Of course. And what's the name of the show, you know, or the 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 YouTube channel? The YouTube channel is uh, Stock Market TV. Yes, at Stock Market TV. Yes. Stock Market TV. So there's there's a morning show um, mm -hmm. every morning with with um, Steve and JC. He has guest hosts. There's usually a guest appearance um, around nine o'clock every morning. Mm -hmm. um, Kind of, you know, JC always kicks off uh, each morning with with the state of the market, and really what what's caught his attention and what he's focusing on, maybe in that particular day or, or, or for the week. Um, and then we have what the fic, you know, uh, we shoot a couple times a week on Wednesdays and uh, and Fridays. Uh, just yesterday we had uh, Angie Setzer, uh, the goddess of grain. Nice, amazing work. Um, more on the fundamental side um, in terms of grain markets. So her her deep understanding of what's going on uh, on the grain markets is amazing. She shared some of her insights yesterday, which is, which is a lot of fun for me because I'm a nerd. I yeah. love those markets. But again, I focus on price. Um, and mm -hmm. that's, you know, I, I there's, there's so much uh, to, to the weather and the way these, these commodities are moving around the world and the supply and demand dynamics and how... Uh, for each individual uh, contract that I think is still amazing, even though it's a lot to digest. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's lots of fun. You've been on the show a couple of times. You got to have it's been a great on. time. Yeah. I was just talking to Spencer about it yesterday. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm always down. It's a blast. And we always cover good stuff on the show. That's always important to me, which is there's so many things I'll go on and it turns into again and again, kind of, looking at this thing or this thing or like, you know, getting completely overblown and over talked on things or, yeah. you know, being pushed a, a direction on a position uh, on the show. Like there's none of that on your show. Like that's, that's what I love about it is like, you come on, you give your opinions. That's great. Like you said, you just had a fundamental person on, you know, like that's great. Yeah. I always want to learn. I, you know, mm -hmm. there, there's, you know, there's so much information out there and the the the, the more I hang around, um, the more I realize how little I actually know of, of, about these markets. So um yes. more of that to come, more of that to come. And like you talk about in terms of opinions, um, you know, I don't know where the market's going. Mm -hmm. You know that. You you know, uh I think we're both very comfortable with that reality. Um, so you know, yeah, we might have opinion on a particular market, but yeah, as Peter Brandt um says, you know, opinions weekly held. That's what it's all about. Strong opinions, strong weekly opinions held. weekly held. Um mm -hmm. is really the key, I think, to success, um, regardless of of whether you're a fundamental trader or you know, the majority of your, your analysis is focused on price and technicals. Yeah. And I think that the thing why, um, you know, I focus so much on price and technicals over everything else. And the reason why is that if the most important thing is risk management, there's no other way to manage risk than with fund or technicals. Fundamentals, there is no way to really manage risk. How, how do you manage risk? You'd say like, oh, you know, let's say the stock is crashing for two months and you're like, well, I got to wait for earnings. Uh, like, you know, what exactly, how exactly do you do that? There's no real way. Anybody who I've ever met who's a trader, whether they're very long term, short term, whatever, they all have risk management and it's all based on price. So, you know, there's always has to be some element of price in there. Um, and I've seen that over the years from, you know, just people you would never dream of using 200 day moving averages and stuff or, you know, like a. Uh, um, you know, the guy uh, O'Neill, William O'Neill, you know, he was a guy who buying 52 week highs and stuff. And, you know, at the time, like people thought like fundamentals were the only way to go. But really, he created a way and a system of putting all these things together, I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying you need some form of 
price action to just get in and out of trades the right way without losing all your money. Absolutely. You had uh, a post uh, last week, it was the week before, um, talking about moving averages, mm -hmm. and, uh, talking about the moving monkeys in the 200 day in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I write all the time about how I don't like the moving averages and I don't, I don't use the moving averages. And if you, if you read any of my stuff and if, 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 if um, you look at any of the charts that I post, I never have a moving average on those, yeah. you know, on those charts, but on CQG, mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a moving average on there. Maybe you have a couple, you know, yeah. so, you know, it's true. Yeah. The, the, the Whatever you're trading on, everybody's there. got one, you know, like yeah, it's a 200 looking at a moving yeah. average or two. Maybe, yeah. maybe pop them on and then I'll pop them off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was great. <laughs> I, I just think it's a, um, you know, with, with people using things like simple, like, oh, if you use a 50 and 200 day crossover, tell you if you're bullish or bearish, like I found that that's a losing strategy, you know, and, and it's just for me, everything comes back to back testing. You know, if I back test, let's get over a 200 day moving average and buy, let's get under it and sell. When I try to do that, it just doesn't work out well. You know, the, the, the trading, the, the um, system loses money. It has a very it has a negative expectancy like you're basically like losing money over and over again so it's like why in the world would i want to use that as a predictor but at the same time if i'm looking at something like a 200 day moving average and the price is coming down to it i will think there's a possibility of a bounce because algorithms will buy on that at those points you know like they'll, you'll see algos buying around those points uh, and then you'll see a bounce there like this thing this happens a lot same with getting over it you know that's it's not even that it's a buy signal for everybody it's something that can take a you know a population who's very negative on something like oil and start to look at it in a more positive light yeah. you know you even watch fun, fundamental people they'll be talking bearish 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 forever on something and then the second it gets over 200 day it's like now there's bullish information coming out and you're just like yeah. i know you were looking at that like i know you looked at that and and that's okay you know i understand from a this is why we do what we do here and why you guys do what you do it's the same thing like in the real world <clears throat> as even as a fund manager if i'm talking to people about their money i have to give them all types of shit and honestly sometimes it's bullshit you know, because I do have opinions. I'm not saying it's not well thought. I'm not saying, you know, I'm lying. I'm just saying I know for a fact that my fundamental analysis when I'm talking to a investor or somebody about it is going to be bull more bullish if my systems are bullish and more bearish if my systems are bearish. So at the end of the day, what really matters? Well, the system matters, you know, yeah. like, and that's the end of that. It's interesting. Um, the, the, the past... CMT uh, symposium um, in, in, in New York in, in the spring, this past April, um, a lot of the old timers were up there basically echoing what you're talking about right now. It's because, you know, 30, 40 years ago, I mean, oh, they had analysis to do that. really was not embraced. And even today, like even today, the CMT uh, association and, 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 and tech technicians are kind of we're still kind of viewed on the fringe versus, you know, um, the CFA uh, uh, Institute um, and, and, and fundamental uh, uh, analysts. Um, but they would have to, they would have to, to create a narrative, mm -hmm. a fundamental narrative um, around their, 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 uh, their technical analysis, their technical approach. Yes. Um, for, for their clients so it sounds like you you you're in, you're in that same boat and it's it's the same it's the same for all of us you know because it's no matter what it's never going to be looked at correctly like you know you have the trend followers who these people have made money you know i had somebody tell say the other day that they back tested trend following and it didn't make money and it's like what what the fuck system are you using and number two is you know you you think all the way back to it and you go like there's guys who've been or firm sorry guy people die <laughs> things about lived 
uh, actual firms, which is trend following. There's uh, firms that have been doing trend following for over for around a hundred years, and they're still making money today. You know, they they've made money with very similar systems, maybe a couple tweaks here and there. I know, you know, in the industry of trend following, we talk a lot about how things got more long term as the years went on. Um, you know, a system that, you know, in the 20s that Donchian used, which was a 20 day high and selling a 20 day low, that doesn't work anymore. Um, so, you know, around the Jerry Parker times with the turtle traders, they had a buying a 50 day high and selling a 25 day low. Now that it, it's very short term, uh, it can work still. It does have a positive expectancy, but it's only in certain assets, mainly commodities. And it's very hard to have that kind of move anymore that happened that quickly. And then the years went on, 100 day high, 50 day lows became another system that still works today uh, for most things has a positive expectancy. But also people are using things like 200 day highs and, and selling 50 day lows or 100 day lows now, which is a very long term system. But that works, too, you know, so. It's a it's a it's a, it's adapting, but it stayed nearly the same, you know, over all these years. And so these systems have continued to work in the way that the one important thing that's always lasted in whatever system we're talking about is that trends exist and persist. Exactly. So once you Up have a down. system, yep. Once you have a system that catches trends, it will continue to catch trends. I think where traders get into trouble with it. Their positionings are too big. Their position sizes are too big. So when you have those pullbacks, you know, you put in you put in your system and you go, you have like a positive expectancy and you see, okay, you know, I'm going to buy, you know, let's say you have a Bollinger Band system, you're buy a, you know, when it pierces the top and sell when it pierces the low and you find out and you back test that this type of system works somehow um, and you go, okay, well, I'm going to put this on. And then you have one position and you're you're trading let's say 100k to make an easy number and let's say you have all 100k in this one position and let's say you know you lose like you know 20 percent of that you know all you have to do is lose that five times you lost everything yeah. um but really so you're you know and that's you're gonna have losing streaks like that because whether your system has a really really high win rate like you know trend following systems don't get much over 60 percent um, so even if you have like a 60% system, um, <laughs> you're going to go through some period, like, cause it doesn't go like, oh, I'm going to win six. Yeah. I'm going to win six and lose four. It's going to go, I'm going to win a few. I'm going to like, I'm going to have a losing period of maybe five sometimes, you know, yeah. like th this, this is what happens. So you have to be ready for that. So if, but if you're losing, you know, if you have a smaller position and you're only losing a thousand dollar per trade, now you've only lost 5% of your account um, with these five positions. And also it's a ridiculous um, example because you should be trading more than one thing. You should be right. trading about five to 10 things when you're starting as time goes on even more, you know, nowadays I, you know, there's times where I could have 30, 40 positions on, um, you know, most of the time it doesn't, it, it stays around that 20 point to 30, but sometimes I could have, you know, I, I know the system has gotten up to 50 one time, you know, That's so amazing. like 50 That's different wild. positions. That's a lot. That's a lot of positions to me. Well, there's guys that in, in, in trend fall, cause that's a thing we trade, what we do. And I think what people miss about when I say something like that, and I'll try to explain this more. I've never explained this right. When we're trading something like energy, mm -hmm. So for me, energy isn't just oil. Energy is the IXE, which is the energy futures. Um, the sector is, futures? Yes, the sector futures. Um, it is, um, ga I won't even talk about natural gas, but gasoline, oil, um, heating oil, and then Brent oil, and then China has, a, has oil. Um, you know, all of these countries that we trade have some form of oil or energy or gasoline of some sort, too. So now as you're adding these positions, now let's just talk about it like we're only trading the U.S. If I'm only trading the U.S., I'm still looking at those three positions, oil, um, gasoline and heating oil. Yes. But if I put on those all all and they all have buy signals, now my positions are even smaller because that's so highly correlated. Right. 
So if I'm using, you know, uh, you know, a position and I'm going, okay, well, my stop is, you know, 1% of my account. If I have three positions that are nearly the same, my stop will probably be around 2% of my account instead of 3%. So it gets smaller and smaller as you do this. So your positions continue to get smaller and smaller and smaller, the more you have that are highly correlated. That's why, once again, you always have to understand like your correlations in these things. Because most of the time when, I mean, it does happen that there's outsized trades in something. Well, you have something like energy or gasoline going up like crazy and oil's flat. Like that does happen. Right, um, right. So you want to have exposure to all those individual contracts, those individual markets, because you don't know which trade is, is going to be that outlier. Yeah, yeah. There was a time, and, and, and Jerry Parker always talks about this one time, where heating oil, um, he had all the, because people would, you know, at the beginning of the turtles, it was looked at like kind of crazy. Like, why would you even do that? And he I'm had a heating oil. Yeah. He had a heating oil trade on. And mm -hmm. so the heating oil trade he had with gasoline and oil and probably five other things, who knows. Um, but the heating oil took off. Everything else started moving down. He Heating oil took off and it made his entire year. He had like a triple digit return that year. And it was all from this heating oil trade. Uh, you know, something weird, commodities especially, something weird could happen in those markets at times. And you're like, what? You know, why is that all the way here? Um, and you really won't know beforehand. And that's really, that, that's a great, a great point. Because Angie Setter kind of made a, a similar point in terms of all the individual, even wheat contracts. Mm, yes. Have their own supply and demand dynamics, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're different varietals, but um you know they have their different usages and uh uses or whatever and 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 yeah i thought that was really interesting you know i noticed you know just from looking at the charts like if some contract looks stronger at other times and, mm. and, and whatnot but yeah i mean I summer wheat was, was really, one that I went crazy i think it's really important for 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 new traders to understand though that um like you you said you know, if you you have all of these these positions, you know, in crude, in Brent, mm -hmm. in heating oil, in um, in gasoline, that those position sizes all have to 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 decrease due to the 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 strong correlation between those markets. Yes, absolutely. That's incredibly important. Probably the most important thing in trading because once again, everything has to come back to risk management. If you're at the position where you're going like, oh yeah, I have like I'm just piling on positions, let's say I'm not paying attention and I'm just going, okay, same position over and over again. Oils you this volatility, I'll just use it, not paying attention to the correlation at all. Like you can blow up, you know, because all it takes is all these to be highly correlated and move against you. And, you know, your 1%, 2% loss could turn to, you know, 10% easily. Um, you know, and I think new traders, I've talked to them and they've spoken more candid to me, you know, about things at times and been like, you know, 10% isn't that much. And it's like, no, it, it, it per position, it is yeah. per position. It is because if you're, if you're sitting there and you're like, you're, you can't look at people look at things like Bitcoin, you know, especially nowadays, uh, they look at Bitcoin and they look at the meme stocks and they're like, if I just put, you know, a hundred dollars into that one thing, I'd have, you know, $20,000 today or something. Don't look for those trades. Those trades aren't going to fucking happen for you. I'm sorry. You're not special enough to get like most of the people who get those trades, like, and those, honestly, those trades yeah. happen in trend following. They, they absolutely they do. do. They yeah. do. But if you, if that's what you're thinking, then I mean, are you taking profits? Yeah. Right. If you're, if you're like, oh, uh, then you I would have 20,000, then I would be mm. doing this and that. I was like, did mm. you take profits when you were up 20,000? Yeah. You think, oh, how no, exactly would you put that together? It's going to go, you know? Yeah. How exactly would you put together that strategy? Because I talk to people about it all the time. Like, you know, I was just talking to a sub the other day and we were talking about, um, you know, uh, and that's one thing I brought up to you that I wanted to talk about today, which is, the feeling I've seen this over and over again. I'm not calling any single person out because it's been like 20, 30 people uh, have been short something tech wise and have told me they're stuck. You know, they're stuck in this trade. They're stuck in it, you know, and 
at the same time yeah there's no i mean it's psychological stuck what, yeah stuck in what way uh can't can't sell it you know they're waiting for it to pull back or the crash to finally happen or or something you know and and you know for me i listen to that and i'm like man that's like it's insane because it's psychological there's nothing there's nothing yeah. real holding you in the market and saying you got to stay in that two is let's say it does, let's say the crash happens let's say like you know all my positions are wrong you know i get stopped out of everything tomorrow and let's say a crash starts to happen you know we get five percent ten percent and twenty percent if you've been in that position that long and you've been hurting for that long you're gonna get you know to a point of maybe even uh maybe you made a little bit of money back and you're gonna sell it you know you're not gonna hold it to the crash because you weren't really like waiting for that you were just kind of hoping to get back to normal or you do the other thing where let's say like trend you know let's say i'm wrong and and you know like let's say the or sorry let's say trend following is is right which so far it has been and trends are persisting and this thing breaks out to all-time highs and just continues to go like where exactly do you get out then so to me, either way, you have to think about your discipline and your psychology. You like you're not going to have your brain is not going to be in a good point to continue to trade and make yeah. money if yeah. you're sitting there and going, "I'm stuck in this. I got to do this." Like, get out of the fucking trade. Like, if if it does crash, you can get back on. If you're looking for an actual crash, that's you know twenty percent. You can miss a few percent of that damn thing. You know, you don't have to sit there and wait for it like in it while it's going up. Like it's the same as like trying to buy a bottom. People do that all the time. You get a crash in COVID. Everybody, you know, they think it made people think that that's just the way trading works. And especially the ones who started trading around that time, they start buying heavily as it's crashing. Oh, it's down 10%. I'll buy some. Oh, it's down 20%. I'll buy some. You know, and then they just like when it kept crashing, instead of like, you know, having any risk management or anything, they just walked away and said, you know, fuck this. And then they came back six months later and they were like, look at me. I'm genius. You know, I bought the bottom. I killed it. You know, and it's like, I know for a fact that that same trader can't one they can't do that again and two they don't have any discipline and without discipline you can't do it again and again so the whole point is to be able to find a way to make money over and over again in these markets uh consistently not lose much your strategy yes at periods of time your strategy is going to suck and you're going to want to blow it up and throw it out a window but that doesn't matter in the end of the day if you can continue to have a good strategy that's robust that captures trends or, you know, let's say it's a mean reversion. I don't really care as long as it works. Uh, but if your strategy is, well, I tried to do this trade and I'm stuck in it or I've tried and I've seen this, you know, it's it's happened 20 or 30 people lately. You know, if, if your strategy is stuck and you're stuck in things, that's going to happen again and again and again until you just make the decision that you're going to get the fuck out of it. You just you're done. I'm done with this. I don't care. Um, you know, I'll get out, I'll get back into it later or just to get out of it and take a weekend. I can't tell you how, how many times over the years I've been like, Hey, you know, like, and for me, this is completely against backtesting. This is completely against anything I have learned from like a systematic traders point of view, but there's time that I will shut down all my positions. Yeah. I'll shut them all down and I'll take, you know, some time, a weekend, a week, you know, just to think about it, you know, what am I doing different? What, what should I be doing differently? What, am I missing something? Is my strategy good? You know, sometimes my strategy is just fine. And I can put on all the same things again on Monday and come back and be fine. And sometimes I realize I'm doing something wrong, you know, like, even if you're systematic, there's still ways to do something wrong. Um, you know, your positions can be too big. You could have grown too fast and changed something. You know, there's a million things you could do. So you can always be wrong and do something wrong. But I, I just I realized that that discipline is thrown out the window. And you at the same time, your your confidence is gone because you're not willing to just get out. And so for me, even though that might cost me a couple bucks. I don't care. I've never, I've never come back from one of those and done worse. I usually do better after those types of periods every single time. Um, and it's just psychological back testing wise. It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense, but it makes sense for my brain and my brain and every, and our brains and the way we feel and our confidence are the reason we, we make money. 
if you can't sit there and put on the trades, if your system's selling you to trade and you're like, well, I really can't, you know, I don't have the confidence to put this on. Like, hey, I got my ass kicked this last month. You know, I can't do it. You're not going to trade well. It, there, I mean, man, there was a lot to unpack. Um, I, think one, I think two of the things that really, really like stand out or really struck a chord with me was just when I hear the word stuck and I hear, you know, holding on to these positions and they're down and, you know, they're just going to wait for it to come back. And I just think of the emotional drawdown, mm. not the, not, not the, the financial, drawdown. not the P and L like this, the, 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 the the emotional drawdown that an individual is going through during that period. And like you see, sometimes you, you got to step away. Yes. Right. You got to know when, when to override your system um, and just kind of reflect yes. and get better. And there's always going to be another opportunity. There's always going to be another opportunity. Like either the market, that's one thing. And that's the thing with FOMO. Like you got, we got to understand that, man, sometimes I've missed trades. I'm like, great. I missed that trade. Yep. Like, perfect. I'm you know, it's going to happen. It's, you know, I'm going to miss a lot. And, and I think the sooner um, traders, investors uh, come to that realization and accept it, um, but the better they'll do. Yeah. I just don't, it's a, it's the hardest thing in trading. It's the hardest thing in trading to be a person. Um, it's hard in life too, just to have that contrarian mindset that you don't care, you know, like that you're, yeah. you know, whether it's fake or real, like you don't care what anybody's going to say. You don't care what you even say sometimes. Like there's times where I'll be saying shit and I'll be like, that dude sounds like a fucking idiot. And I need to, you know, fade that dude, you know, like, I, I mean, I, I've talked about it before, like fading yourself is yeah. important too. Like there's times in trading where you'll need to fade yourself. Yeah. And I don't think pe many people talk about that, uh, do anything with that at all, because it's just like, that's how trading is. Like there's times where you're like, I'm, I sound like a fucking idiot. Like, so, and you really have to know that if you have confidence that you sound perfect all the time, like, and you're trading badly. Like, that's not a good combination. Like, you can be in a bad point of bad point in your trading and convince yourself that everything you're doing is right, you know? And it's like, you just have to look at, like, how losing money feels. It doesn't feel good to lose money. It's And also, we get paid based on the price. So mm -hmm. I don't want to sit there and go back and forth arguing with, like, that's the thing. I don't care to argue with random people about what the fundamentals say about my semiconductor position at the beginning of this year or my NASDAQ position, or if I think this is going on, like, none of that matters to me because my signals are long. Like, and not to mention once a trade is on for me, you know, it's on. And I think that's something that comes with time. Um, you know, there's so, I forget who it was. It was Mark Wizards one. It might've been Larry Hike. And he basically said that when he puts on a position, that's it. Once it's on, his risk management is in there. He doesn't care what happens in the world. He doesn't care if, you know, this this or that thing happens. He's going to just keep the position on until it hits the stop or he gets a sell signal. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I found that that works very well. And even like there's times where I'll have people, you know, like and I'll even think things and see something hit like close to a top and it might be even be resistance and I'll kind of be thinking like, that's probably it. And there's been times I've been right. That, that was it. And then it comes back and I get, you know, my cell signal. But the thing is, I, there's been more times where I have been completely wrong and it is blasted through everything. And, you know, Bitcoin a couple of years ago is a perfect example, you know, like uh, going from if I would have just been thinking about what I thought as a technician and a trader and a fundamental trader, I would have been like, okay, let's say I put that trade on at the same point, which I probably wouldn't have. I got a buy signal. Um, you know, I think that was around 10K was the last buy signal. There was a sell signal and then a new buy signal around 10K. And it ran to 20. And that's been major resistance for Bitcoin for a very long time. 
And, you know, if I was thinking fundamentally and technically, I'd have said, okay, resistance, take profits, get out of this something, you know, and then it ended up running all the way up to 65 or something, you know, like it's, it's how this works. Like if trading was this easy thing that we didn't have to, uh, that we knew what was going to happen, that we knew it was going to hit this point, that we knew Bitcoin can run to 20 or 65,000. Like if we knew all those things, it wouldn't be the markets and every single person out there would make money. Every person, there would be no, like, look at the hedge fund index. If you guys have never looked at, if you're watching this, you've never looked at the hedge fund index, they don't always make money either. So you think like of these people as very smart people, the smartest guys in the room and so on, like, they don't always make money either. Like it's, it's a hard thing to do to do this. Like, and, and the biggest thing I think is, you know, my rule number one of everything is we are powerless over market direction. Like, that's that's rule number one for me and everything i have no idea where this market's gonna go i can't make it go up or down i can't say hey it's stuck in a range you need to break out today like like not, it's not gonna listen to me so if i'm powerless over it i have to understand that my predictive ability is garbage and that i need to just follow my strategy and my plans yep yep keep your eye on the ball and react mm -hmm. you know just react um to, to, to the, to the changing data. Mm -hmm. Um, that's really important. Um, one thing, uh, I mean, I've learned so much from JC and Steve and, and, and Sean and all the guys at, at, at all star charts. One thing I've, I, I've, I've been able to do in the past couple of years that I wouldn't have done say five years ago, um, is, is flip my, my outlook for a particular market and go from either long to short or short to long mm -hmm. um after a failed a failed move um which has been amazing like i i never i, I never would have traded like a, a failed breakout and, and and flipped my uh flipped the book and taken it in the opposite direction um in the past and that's something that i've i've, I've, I've picked up and it's just it's such an amazing um trait uh, yeah for, for lack of a better word uh the best to 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 have and be able to to turn on a dime because yeah i don't know where the market's going mm. um you know i and i think a lot of um at least from what i pick up on twitter a lot of people have a hard time grasping that and 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 you know the whole the the, the hold me to something that i said like six or seven months ago yeah <laughs> um, and, you know, so much can change in a week yes. you know so much so much can change you know it only gives you know every day um a, a lot of weight but some days some even individual uh single sessions um can can carry a lot of information especially when they're at a, a key key level or, or or an inflection point so yeah yeah and you got you, it's it's key you got it got it update your priors you gotta you gotta change with with the environment every time with the, data, with the data and go with the flow because you know we have no control over what where the market goes it's like mother nation it's like it's like the ocean yes right it's like yes. the ocean you gotta go with the great flow. example ride, probably the gotta, best example gotta ride the tide you gotta you know um yeah you gotta go with the flow I just think that's a that's the key in in trading is you know you can't you can't push the market around you know and there's two things you're powerless over market direction and your trading's unmanageable like those are the two things that are important obviously like you know I I'm a recovered addict it's a, still the same step in step one of NA which is you know uh, we're realize we're powerless over drugs and our life is unmanageable it's the same thing for me with markets though it's like. When people, you know, when you realize your trading is unmanageable, you know, like you've done something stupid, you're stuck in a trade, you you feel like you can't go any further with it, something like that's unmanageability. You're not managing what's in front of you. There's some and it could be something as simple as something going on in your life. I can't yeah. tell you how many traders I've met in my life that something bad was going on in their life and they're thinking, if I just make this trade work my life will be this much better. 
you yeah. know, and, and, and I've been there, you know, like I was a new trader too. At one point we all were anybody who tells you that they weren't and they're fucking lying. Like everybody, everybody has lost money. Everybody's had a bad time trading. It's not something that works well every single day and that's okay. Um, but because of that, you have to understand that there's a point where you're like tired of it. You're tired of losing every day. You're yeah. exhausted being in these positions day after day and week after week of getting the shit kicked out of you in these markets. And so how do you do that better? What's a better way? And, you know, you might, you might find a completely different way for me and that's okay. But I think overall, like there's a thing that all traders have, which is risk management. All good traders have risk management. Most traders that are good and in the long term understand that trends exist and persist. Most traders do that. Most traders use that. Um, you know, I've even found certain trades kind of funny where I'm watching Buffett buy things and it's almost like he's running a trend, trend following system, you know, like kind of makes me laugh. Like I'm like, it's he just bought a hundred day high, you know, like I'm just like kind of like eh, that's kind of odd, you know, but most of the time trends exist and persist. So we need to understand that. Uh, we need to also understand that our psychology has a lot to do with it. So, you know, when things are going rough in your life, um, either figure out a way to be more systematic at those times or not trade during those times or something, you know, like you, you never know, but there's just so much to it. Um, and, you know, I'm sitting over here looking and I have, I, I got a, do you ever read Sam Weinstein's book secrets for, uh, crafting and bull and bear markets? I haven't. He's got a couple books, doesn't he? I'm not sure if he has a couple or if this is the only one, but it's the it's the main one he this, has. This is the main one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I've, I've, I got a buddy of mine who um he was on it's a real a real corny cover. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He was on a he used to um they he jumped on a call with with uh with Sam every morning. He was on mm -hmm. the trading desk at um at Deutsche Bank, and this is this is before uh the Great Financial Crisis. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was his, you know, that was his experience with technical analysis. You know, I told him years ago I was getting a technical analysis, and he told me, "Hey, you got to read this guy." Yeah, Stan Weinstein. Yeah, yeah, I haven't read that one yet, but well, so basically, you know what what he did, uh, which was well, one in Market Wizards, he's a dude who has these insane returns. You know, like he's killing it. He's always like pretty right. Like he he's a he's a great trader. And so he comes out with this book and basically what he says is, you know, there's four different stages of markets. You know, there's the basing stage. Uh, there's the stage where it's trending. There's the topping stage. And then there's the downtrending stage. You know, you have all these different stages in the market. And so basically you're able to kind of just as simple as that, as dumb as that sounds, like as dumb, simple as that sounds. Those things to keep you in line and making money over and over again. It's the same as like looking at your uh, chart you just posted today. If you guys have Twitter, Ian's on Twitter. He just posted a chart. I retweeted it, which was uh, natural gas. It's basing. That would be a stage one for him. Yes. You know, you'd wait for that breakout, you know, and that like simple things like that. Because once again, stage one means don't buy. Everybody loves to buy during stage one. This is this <laughs> is so funny you bring this up because um I had I, someone reached out to me, a good friend of mine reached out to me um was it yesterday or Thursday? And I was like, you know, from one to we're going to the moon, like yeah, how how dad. long are you natty yeah. gas right now? I was like, uh zero. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not long at all like you know unless you want to you know count some 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 calls i have in you know a few midstreams but you know uh it's got to break out yes it's got to break out you know it's so not ready yet it's not ready yet yeah yeah i i it's think that's a... it's great but yeah it looks like it's going to break out soon. Like, that's the thing. Like, you want to be like, it's going to break out soon because it looks like it's going to break out soon. It's not going to break out soon. You know, like that's <laughs> that's a, it might, you know, it, sorry, it, might. it could it could break out tomorrow. But it, but thinking that doesn't make it happen. Doesn't, Just wait no, for it to happen. You know, like I remember, um, you know, probably the last um, last dumb trade I had was 20. 19 it wasn't dumb it was actually you know i i still think of it a dumb trade because it's a dumb trade that made money um it was a options trade 
I had a calls on GDX um, and it was in a very tight coil in April. Um, but I put the options on pretty early in this coil. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just kind of sitting there. The options price was rotting away, uh, you know, and then it broke out. And yeah, I made I made money after that, but there was no reason to buy it beforehand. <laughs> Like, like, you know, yeah, there was no reason I could have just waited for it to break out of that coil. I could have, you know, done something differently. This is probably like, you know, for me, options are very tough. Um, and I really don't trade options too much. It's very rare. I don't, I don't either. I'm really, really interested in options. I've, mm -hmm. I've been following uh, Sean McLaughlin um, uh, more closely. I've been following him for a long time, but I'm starting to follow him more closely and and what he's doing and his strategies. He heads um, All Star Charts Options, mm -hmm. um, but I bought a breakout. I bought some options after a breakout and a couple of names. Um, one of them, uh, AM Intero Midstream Corporation. But what's what's interesting is that price has started to coil, you know, mm. only over the past couple of weeks or so, kind of just chopping sideways. But theta is decaying. Mm. So I'm not used to seeing like, oh, yeah, I bought the breakout. It's going my way. But the value of my, my yep. position is is falling. So it's it's, it's interesting. It's just, you it's, know, it's I, an I interesting one. It, yeah. And, I, and I've understood it for a long time from from. uh I guess, uh, an intellectual standpoint, mm -hmm. but to, to ex the experience, you know, the experiential knowledge is just so much. It's more totally powerful. different, you know, yeah, it's totally so different. Powerful. And then, you know, for, for me, I just realized, you know, especially at that point was probably the last time I ever did anything like that because it was like, why, you know, there was, there was no point in it. I think yeah. people see something like natural gas basing here and they're thinking of the discount and how cheap it is. And then when it breaks to that next level, they're going to be like, oh, you know, you missed it, you know, <laughs> like or, you missed it. You missed, And really like, no, that's not true. Like, uh, especially like something like that, that there's different types of breakouts. And I think this is an important thing that people don't talk about in trend following and breakout analysis is like there's a stage one, which is, you know, your breakout that just makes a new high, you know, something that just went vertical and makes a new high. Most of the time those fail. Um, then there's another breakout where things like are in a very wide range and they finally break out and those can work sometimes, sometimes they fail. But then there's the best breakout, which is when you have a very tight pattern, like kind of even the UNG pattern, natural gas, you have natural gas in this very tight range. It's kind of basing volatility is softening. It's getting lower and lower and lower. And then boom, you have this great breakout. You know, because low volatility leads to high volatility. That makes me think of I think of sugar. Mm -hmm. of sugar, when you talk about that, how tight that range was for so long, and yep, and um, when it finally went, if if you measured, you know, the, uh, uh, a target based on the height of that pattern, that that consolidation, when things mm -hmm. are really tight, like they were in sugar, they tend to exceed exceed that measured move which it did i mean it's pulled back since but that that's the kind of breakout that, that comes to mind when you describe that that ladder you know that 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 tight uh consolidation low volatility pent up kind of energy that contraction in price that that leads yes. to an explosive expansion mm -hmm. um we talk about the first type of the, that's the, where the money's this, made yeah a strong move leading to a new high i think of microsoft mm. Right. And and I look at a chart of Microsoft and I think it's due for for a correction. That doesn't necessarily mean that my, that the move fails. Mm. Maybe it 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 corrects through through time and it chops sideways for a little bit. Or yeah. maybe it does, you know, maybe that the, maybe it does kind of catch lower below the former highs and mm. you know it consolidates for a little bit. You know, I'm not not I'm not it's not a reason to go get short tech. It's not a reason yeah. to go get short Microsoft, but I think something that's, to pay that's attention important to. to understand when you're buying those if you're buying new all-time highs in microsoft understand mm -hmm. that you could they're, 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 it's a logical place actually to see some digestion yeah yeah and and really at the same time if you buy new all-time highs like that 
even if it's this crazy breakout and if it's even if it's just moving to the upside most of the time those do work out more than they don't um and they're it's more as if sorry they don't work out more than they don't it's like a 45 percent win rate but the moves are so good that you have a big positive expectancy mm-hmm. meaning that if you take that trade every time you're going to make good a good amount of money I mean, there's a dude who just um, does nothing that I met before, but in stocks, he does this in stocks. He uses the S&P 500, only those 500 stocks, and he buys new 52-week highs. That's it. That's all he does. And he makes good money, makes great money doing it. Puts a 20% trailing stop on almost everything. No, It doesn't even vary for him. Just 20% wow. trailing stop. Doesn't have a sell signal, does, nothing. Do, doesn't matter the industry group. It doesn't, doesn't matter, matter the industry what's group. What's going on? Nope. Doesn't matter where we are in the cycle. Nope. None of that. Ha- has a has a filter that just tells him when there's 52 week highs, and boom, he just buys. Wow. Yep. And it, and he makes money. He makes great money. You know, because I I really believe that being just disciplined in a strategy. You find a strategy that works and just be disciplined in it. You will make money over time. Yeah, there's going to be losing periods and yeah, you're going to have a point. But the 52-week high strategy has worked as far back as you can go. You want to go all the way back and back test it to the beginning of the stock market? It works. It works every time. Like, it's crazy. It's the one thing that I've I've never... I, I still don't understand the exact... You know, that's the thing. Like, I don't understand exactly why, you know, like... There's there, and I don't have to, you know, like it's not something I have to understand why 52 weeks highs work so well, but I just have to know that it does, you know, and execute on it. For me, I think more of back testing and telling me something works than what I could read, you know, and everything. Like, yeah, I, I have, I have thoughts. I'm a human. I could come up with reasons for it if I want to. I could tell you about, you know, fundamentally if a thing is here and it's moving to this level, like I could tell you all that stuff. But really, all I need to know is that the back test is telling me that this works over time. It's worked for 100 years. It'll probably continue to work and execute on that. And yeah, there'll be times when your strategies will go stale. It happens. Um, But something like that really, really doesn't. You know, it's as weird as it sounds. Something like that has just withstood the test of time. Yeah, and it's it's that's one of the filters we use. Mm-hmm. Um, when when you know, you know it's great for breath. Many, tells you a lot about breath. Yeah, the many um bottom up scans mm-hmm. that we have at All Star Charts, percentage mm-hmm. away from fifty two week highs, is is a key uh, uh, uh filter for those yes. scans in, in terms of finding the best names that you know we want to get long. Um, yes. but yeah, so. Yeah, if it's two week highs. Again, like, I don't know why either. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. You know, I, I mean, I guess it, it, could, it, it could just go back to that, you know, markets trend and trends persist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's all you really need to know. It's the Meb, Meb Faber and his uh, strategy of uh, sector rotation. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the, there's all, at the beginning of it, there's all these books on momentum investing. You know, and I've read all of them from that list. I've read every single one. And it's kind of always the same thing over and over again. They give their reasons why and so on. So like I said, I do know what is thought of to be reasons of it. But I think for traders watching this and gathering it, they just have to know that that stuff works because they're back testing it. Mm -hmm. Like Jerry Parker didn't come in and say like, yeah, I'm going to buy this. When this hits this, I know why. Or or uh, who is his mentor? Uh, Richard. God, Dennis. I don't know. Dennis. Yeah. Uh, Richard Dennis being another one just going like, you know, he's another trend follower, you know, buying these new highs and so on. Yeah, there's there might be reasons, I think, why my system works and reason why they think their system works. It just doesn't matter. So quick, before we get off of here, last few minutes, I wanted to just talk about what are you thinking about the market? Where are you looking at right now? What looks good to you? Um, You know, where where are you thinking um, money should be put and treated best at the moment? I'm looking at energy. I'm looking at energy and and it's more in terms of, of, of looking further out, like looking, you know, three, six months down the road, looking towards the end of the year, heading into the year. Um, yes. And I think one of the, the 
you know, some of the key themes that we've been, you know, at All Star Charts um, that we've been hitting on over the past couple of years, um, this this transition um, into uh, a potential commodity super cycle, mm. uh, uh, a new uh, a secular trend where cyclical value areas of the market, old, uh, I guess, economy stocks start to work. And we get this outperformance overseas. Yes. Now we're seeing a lot of strength overseas. Um, Dow Jones Industrial Average is looking good. Mm-hmm. Um, transports are looking good. Um, so are so is tech. I think what's really has my attention is that this massive swing in tech over the past six months or so um, has. I, I, you know, it, I, I think it, 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 I don't think it, it, um, it changes that, that narrative. No. The commodities have come off significantly. So, so the one, the one chart that, um, that I'm really focusing on right now, I think is one of the most important charts out there. It's actually energy relative to tech. Mm. That relationship. I mean, you, you, you look at how, that that downtrend in terms of energy underperforming technology stocks over the past decade really accelerated into the low in 2020. I mean, that's extremely yeah. crude oil traded a negative 50 bucks or something like yeah. that. You know, um, and 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 that relationship that 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 uh, relative relationship bottomed, and energy the final is, smack is still- Yeah, exactly. And so I think that could could mark a very important inflection point for both energy over tech, commodities over stocks, um, and, and bonds. So, you know, I, I, in, in, in that, that, that XLE, XLK, uh, uh, ratio is pulling back to, uh, a key retracement level. It's pulling back to show up a former, uh, highs. So it's a logical level to see energy start to dig in and outperform. So that's really, you know, if, if, if we're still in a commodity super cycle, if we're in the early early stages of a commodity super cycle, if we're going to continue to see you know uh, overseas markets outperform and and in this you know move into to to a, a strong secular um, trend where where these old economy stocks are really going to take over um, and 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 take the a leadership role, mm-hmm. that I think that that ratio has got to dig in and catch higher. So that's really, that's, that's kind of what I'm watching from, from, um, I guess an analytical standpoint, um, in terms of the commodity markets, in terms of just, I mean, I think crude oil above, above 74 on that, yeah. on the daily charts are really important. And what's funny is like, you, you look, I, I look back and, and, and highlighting the prior cycle high in 2018 has been in a really important level for just global risk assets, stocks and commodities. And that level is around 76, actually. Hmm. So I've been focusing on that 76 level, you know, for a couple of years now, more so recently as it's pulled back, right? Yes. Is it going to reclaim that 76 level? It's interesting when we look at a, at a monthly chart, the monthly closing high is actually 74 just over 74. And then when I look at the daily chart now, um, the market's telling me that that 74 level is actually pretty, is important. And I need to be focusing on that level. I need to trade against that level. So um, again, updating, updating my priors, you Mm -hmm. know, you know, not trying to find my level on these charts. I'm trying to find the market's level. Yes. Yeah. Right, you know, um, good way of saying so, that. So many times, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll, I'll, I'll spin it. Oh, this is my level. This is what I'm. Yeah. Like. Really, it's like I'm doing my best and trying to, 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 to make sure that I'm picking up on the market's level. Like they don't care about my level. Mm-hmm. About my level, market doesn't care about what I think. Yeah, um, you know, and I, I like you know the one thing that I like about um you know I'm not a day trader, but when I used to trade more short term stuff. I would look, the only reason why I would use something like Twitter 
would be to tell me to like what everybody's levels they're looking at. Yeah. You know, there's, there's tons of people looking at levels on like, let's say the S P 500, you know, you type it in the search engine, you can see a thousand charts of the S P 500 and see everybody's level for it. You know, that's a good idea just for traders in general, just to kind of understand what everybody's kind of looking at. Not that you need to have that level. And obviously like there's levels of resistance that most people are looking at. It's pretty easy to find on a chart, but at the same time, it's good to also see that everybody else has those kind of marked. And most of the time when everybody has the same thing they're looking for, it's not going to happen, yeah. you know? So sometimes it can work another season. way. Yeah. Right. So there's lots of things in the markets and you, you just have to really know how to pick and choose what exact tools you're going to use and how you're going to use it because it's dynamic. It's always changing. I think it's a thing that I, I like the most about the markets is, you know, things like, um, when news is all bullish and everybody's happy, you know, that most of the, most of the time that's when the market's going to top. And, you know, sometimes it, that can go a lot further than you think um, because uptrends, you know, the sentiment isn't the same as in downtrends, but in downtrends, when everybody is too bearish, that's usually when the bottom happens. You know, we were, we were talking about when, when COVID happened, there was people talking about the market going to zero, <laughs> you know, like there, yeah. there was actual people talking about the market going to zero, you know, and about it that should point, go to zero. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? That's that whole, yeah. like it's, it's, it, and if it, yeah. it has to, it's broken. has to, yeah, it's, it's broken. broken. It's manipulated. It's yeah. Market's manipulated. <laughs> market's <laughs> manipulated by, you know, every, all these people and there's no way, you know, and it just, it's, it's how they think. But if you can kind of go in and be like, okay, well, you know, sentiment is very bearish. Everybody hates this at this point and just sit on your hands and wait for a buy signal. Like you're going to be a lot better than the trader who's like, oh my God, I have a buying opportunity. It's on sale. You know, like there's, there's no sales in the market. Sales are very fucking costly. Like that's, that's all I've learned in the market. Sales are very costly. And you got to think that, that, that drawdown was so steep too. What are you going to say? When we would talk about sales, how about palladium? Oh yeah. Yeah. Palladium is on sale. Yep. You know, record longs, record yep. longs for commercials. Well, they keep getting longer. longer. Yeah. They keep adding to their net long position and palladium keeps catching lower. Yes. You know, um, which in, in another market that, that has really stretched positioning right now is um uh the the US Treasuries. Yeah. Um, Look as that. you as you go from from the two year out to the 30 year. You know, that position isn't as well, I've been tricked with the positioning in treasury so many times. Yeah, and I, I think that's think... something that people don't talk about is like sometimes there's there's things like the stock market um, and treasuries that the positioning isn't what you think it is. You know, commodities, it's pretty simple to know. Yeah. There's there at this point, there's a lot of people in the world who are looking at, let's say, buying palladium. Mm -hmm. And so or sorry. The, the producers at this point are seeing that palladium is very cheap. And for them at this price, they can make a ton of money on it, it and they don't care if it drops a little bit more or not. Yeah. Um, and so, but in stocks or, or uh, bonds, that could be a million different things, buying those to those levels just because they have to, you know, it's not even a, uh, because they want to, it's, it's cause they have to, but looking at palladium, you know, like I'm looking at it right now, I brought up a chart you know, we're talking about, yeah, it has a very, very, very long, big, long position. And it's nearly, is that a record? Yeah, it's a record. You know? It keeps every, 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 we keep pushing it. And honestly, that's gonna, that's the type of trade I like to see. But I'll tell you exactly how I put that trade together is I'll go, okay, now we're at a record long position in Palladium. And I'm going to watch it. I'm just going to, you know, sit there and watch it and wait for some form. Because I don't usually buy bottoming signals, but I do have certain signals that I'll buy like a very like 50 day high, um, you know, something like that. But it's only when you have these record long positions. But once again, it's like, is as it's crashing, am I going to buy it? Fuck no. It's yeah. it's palladium. That thing could drop to nothing. You know, that it does that. These things in commodities, they do that. They keep yeah. going. To a point where you'd never think, yeah, it's a record long position. Yeah, there's a use for it. Yeah, it's probably undervalued, but that doesn't mean it needs to go up today. It yeah. means that I need to pay attention to it. It's got a record long position. Most of the time, a bottom and a turnaround happens around those points. But don't just buy it based on that. 
wait for it wait for that to happen and it probably will happen but that's the thing the anticipation is what everybody wants oh it's gonna happen and and they buy it and it's dropping and dropping and dropping and they're like well you know it's gonna happen today you know like there was a record for example there was a record long position in palladium it's it's been going on since you know uh what's that 2022 you know like it's it's been in this record long position since the beginning of 2022 so you know this is they're buying heavily they're they're you know they're they're, it's gonna happen at some point but it just doesn't happen have to happen it doesn't nothing i think that's the biggest thing that i'll end on that things don't have to happen in the market there's nothing that has to happen there's Uh things that happen there's things that don't happen but nothing has to happen the market could stay there forever. Palladium could just go out of existence. You know, like I know it's impossible, but I'm just saying like the market will do what it's going to do and you have no control over that. Absolutely. And if you don't have any control over that, you just have to understand that and, you know, put in your risk management and wait for buy signals. Yeah. Focus on what you do have control over. All right, Ian. Thanks so much for coming on, man. As always, it was great to have you and uh, we'll talk soon. Sounds great, man. Thanks for having me.